Hello and welcome to a new video about alternating current. Today we're talking about power. Yeah, power. And I already said, an AC circuit doesn't only have one power, we have more powers. More power. If this is good or not, we will see. But actually it's not really true because of course there's only one power. Yeah? It's the so-called momentarily power. Yeah? And I will note this. Yeah? So we have a momentary power. Momentary power. That's the power we currently have at this exact moment in time. And since this power is, since you and I are changing, this power is also changing. So I write it with small letters. Say, okay, my power, depending on the time t, is my voltage at exactly this time t multiplied by the current at exactly this time t. Hmm? You see? That's it. Finito. <laughs> that's, that's power in an AC circuit. <clears throat> because now this is sign, sign shaped, U is sign shaped, I is sign shaped, yeah? and we multiply two sine waves. Everybody can imagine, no problem, and this is the, our momentary power. Goodbye. Yeah? <laughs> of course not. Of course you cannot imagine. I can also not imagine if I would have never seen it before. And I'm not going to draw it. Because we have seen how my sine waves look, and if I now have to multiply sine waves and so on, therefore I have prepared something on the computer. Computer can draw sine waves much better than I can. Yeah? So let's have a look what is happening with our sine wave. Let's have a look at the computer simply, how this looks like, the momentarily power. So at the computer I already prepared an Excel sheet. Right? I prepared an Excel sheet and I've drawn in, I've uh, made a diagram, yeah? and we see here a voltage, the blue line, and we see here a current, it's the red line. And currently I am doing this with, with 125 ohms. So here are the actual values of the, of the voltage, here are the actual values of the current, and here in this column I calculate the actual values of the power right? for each combination. And now let's have a look how this turns out. Aha! So this is how it turns out. Here is the positive semi wave. Yeah, here's the positive wave, uh, part of the wave. And here we have positive actual power. And because here all parts are negative and negative multiplied with a negative number gives a positive number, we always transport power in the positive direction. So we have a pulsating power and this pulsating power is always transporting power in one direction. So even if there are negative values for current and voltage, the power is still positive going in the same direction. So we have here an average mean power, yeah? mean power, which will be transported, but not continuously, but in pulses. And I drawn here 50 Hertz, which is usual in Europe, yeah? with 50 Hertz, and this 50 Hertz would now cause 100 Hertz pulses where the power is pushed into the device. Let's call it into the device. Okay? Transported in one direction. At least this is the case if we are uh, having a look at an resistor. Okay? Now we want to see how this looks like if there is a phase shift between between voltage and current. Right now both are in phase resistance. Okay? And I will set it to zero. Uh, and I will now also say, let's have a look at uh, a coil. So I will have the same 125 ohm, but J125 ohm. Okay? So we have here that the, the, the current 
is still the same, the voltage is still the same, effective value, root mean square, still the same values, but we have a phase shift. And now look what has happened to our power. We're still transporting power. Uh, the, actual, the actual power is not zero. Uh, however, in this area between 5 milliseconds and 10 milliseconds, the power will be transported in one direction, in positive direction here, and in the second part, the power will be transported in the other direction. And if you compare the areas above and below, uh, you notice they are the same. So the mean value, the average value of the power is zero. So we are transporting power, but we give the power there and back and there and back and there and back and there and back and always the same amount of power there and back. So in average, there is no power. There's actual power, yes, yeah, but not in average. Hmm. But I still have the same current and voltage. This is just caused by the phase shift between those two. With 90 degree phase shift, it seems like we have no transported power at all. At least it's true for positive. Let's see for negative. So if we, if we would have here a, a capacitor, <clears throat> does look a little bit different. Of course, the current is now leading and the, and the voltage is following. And also the directions of the actual power have changed. But there is still not power transportation. No, there is not. <laughs> yeah. There is actual power, so I'm still using my, my, my wires. Yeah. There is current going in and out, the same current as before. I'm using the wires, but I'm not transporting any power with this. Hmm. This looks complicated, right? Let's see what is happening if we don't have a 90 degree phase shift, but something else. 125. Aha. Now it's less. Now I have 45 degree phase shift between uh, current and voltage. And we see, aha, uh -huh, now we have an average value of my power. There is an average value. However, it's not that high as it could be with this amount of current. Because actually there's an amount which I push in and immediately afterwards take away again. So here are still areas below the zero. So there are still areas where I pull out the power again. Push it in, push a lot of power in, take a little something out. Push a lot of power in, take a little something out. All right? So if I don't have 90 degree phase shift, but less or somewhere between minus 90 and plus 90 degree phase shift, yeah, then I cannot use the whole power, even if current and, and voltage is still the same. If, if this is still the same, I cannot use all the power I'm transporting. I have only a virtual power. Let's sum this up on our sheet again. Okay? Let's make a summary and, and note this. Okay. So the momentarily power is pulsating. Uh, however, in average, we have an, a power which is transferred. Uh, not the maximum power, not the minimum power, but we have an average value. Usually, hopefully, we have an average value. This average value is called active power because that's the power which is acting. Active power. Okay. Active. The so-called active power. Sine is P, big P. This is now not small because that's, it's an, a mean value, an average value. Yeah. This is the, the average value of the momentary power. That's it. So this is the power we are transporting in average unit is 1W Watt, according to James Watt. Hmm. Clear. Hmm. 
but we have seen that this active power might be zero. But we still have the same effective value, the same root main square of voltage and current. And if I have an effective value of a voltage and an effective value of a current, and I assume that the effective values are as effective as a DC current, then I would be able to have this amount of power U multiplied by I. Effective value U, effective value I, multiply them. This must be also power. Yeah? But this is not the power I can, I can harvest, I can transport. This is only an apparent power. This is how it is called. Apparent power. It appears only that this amount of power is available. Apparent power. And the apparent power S equals the effective value of U multiplied by the effective value of I. So it's the product of the effective values, the root main squares of those. Of course it's volt, of course it's ampere, and of course it would be correct to name it watt. But we usually call it 1VA, volt ampere, to distinguish that we do not have this power available, yeah? to say it's not what, it's not what we can use, yeah? it's volt ampere, it's what it, it appears we can use, but we cannot use. So there's a factor between the active power P and the apparel, apparent power S, yeah? and this is called power factor. This says how many percent of my apparent power is really active power. Okay? In sign, in sinus, if sinus, if it's a sinus signal, yeah, then we call it also cosinus phi. Why? Will be clear shortly. Usually we call it lambda. Lambda is the power factor. Yeah? So this is just how many percent or which amount, which fraction can be used as active power. So there's a difference between active power and apparent power. Yeah? This power is called reactive power. Yeah? So active power, reactive power. <clears throat> this reactive power, sine is Q, and this is not just defined as S minus, uh, S minus P, yeah? it's defined as S squared minus P squared. And then also the square root of this stuff. Unit is as here, 1 VA volt ampere. To also indicate, oh, this is not usable. Yeah. Why, why that? Let's say we have somewhere a certain amount of, of apparent power. Here, that's my apparent power S. Yeah. We have a certain amount of active power, P. Then this is a Pythagoras. This is Pythagoras shape. So we have here our reactive power, Q. And the, act, the reactive power and the active power have an angle of 90 degree. And here we see phi the phase shift between current and voltage can be seen here in this so-called power triangle. This is the power triangle, and now it's clear why it's called cosinus phi for sinusoidal uh, values, yeah? because it's S multiplied by cosinus phi yeah? is P power factor. All right. So this is the power triangle. Hmm? And if this only appears uh, if we have a phase shift. So if there is an, a resistance and a reactance, and the reactive power is built by the reactance, and the active power is built by the resistance. So the active power is built by the real part of the impedance, 
and the reactive power is built by the imaginary part of the impotence. So, and if we want to calculate this as, as a complex number, then we say, okay, this is a complex number. This must be somewhere I have, I have a length, I have an angle. This must be, can be calculated. And if I want to calculate this, I, this complex apparent power, I just have to multiply the complex u multiplied by the complex i. This would be logical, right? But it's not the case because we have to use the con the conju conjunct complex. How is this written? Ah, conjunct complex. This is for sure wrong. <laughs> we have to twist the imaginary part. Yeah? Then everything turns out to be correct uh, because then what is re what what we get what we get then is that we get a, a complex number where we have a real part plus j imaginary part. This is why I drawn it this way. So the real part uh, is the active power and the reactive power is the imaginary part of this complex apparent power. And this is again building real value, imaginary value. This is again building this power triangle. Everything fits together, right? Isn't that nice? Well, I think yes. <laughs> All right, so that's, uh, that's the powers. Yeah. Of course, this Q can be positive or negative depending on the reactance. If positive reactance or negative reactance, if this is uh, if this is a positive value, then we have an inductive. If it's negative value, then we have a capacitive uh, reactive power. This is called hmm. powers in AC circuit. Let's say the momentary power is the only one which is physically there. Active power is the average value of the momentary power. Uh, and the parent power is the power how it appears that I can use and the difference between those two is the reactive power and all those three shape together this power triangle and we see between the active power and the re and the apparent power we see the the phase shift between current and voltage how can a phase shift between current and voltage appear which is other than 90 degree because we said, okay, at a, at a coil it's 90 degree, at a, uh, the capacitor it's 90 degree. The answer is by combination of elements, by combination of, and next time we'll talk about a series circuit of a resistor and a coil, series circuit of R and L. Next video. Then we will see how this turns out with pointer diagrams and so on. Yeah. For this time, Thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.